also want you to help us introduce our lecturer for today and the title of the lecture. Bismillah. Nam a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Uh lecturer for today is someone that is well known to many of us and many of us that are that are b- far back in Nigeria in MSS in Lagos and those of us who are used to NTH and R5 would know we would have had one of his lecture before he is by name Ustaz Harun Fani he has a BSc in philosophy from the University of Lagos he has an MSc in Islamic jurisprudence from Malaysia and he is currently the MD CEO of Basmala Institute in Dublin and is also the imam of Al Kidma Community Center in Dublin is also the amir of Muslim Association Forum Dublin that's Muslaf and he currently is still the presenter and the producer of a program that is well known to many of us back in Nigeria that is Ramadan Diet on NTA2 Lagos Network Center VI so so those of and the program is still holding even till now so may almighty Allah continue to bless our sheikh our ustaz and may he make us also to may he make his lecture to be beneficial for us assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi so we'll give uh we'll introduce ourselves briefly i am uh well known to the sheikh uh dr abdubais alaugo <laughs> and uh, we have our Amir also here, Brother Dawood uh, Adenito. Afa, can you show your face? I say salam, see Afa. Okay, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm not sure if you remember my face, but I'm sure if you remember Oriya, but you probably remember me. I remember your face. <laughs> it's been a long time. It's been a long time. 20, 20 years plus, I think yeah. so. We parted ways in the part of Islam. Alhamdulillah, we are meeting again in the part of Islam. This is the greatest name that, that Allah can give to anyone. Alhamdulillah. I know if we want our lecturer to speak for the next uh, three hours, he can. So, but uh, we would give him about 45 minutes and he can, he can take, us, uh, take his time to deliver the uh, the is topic and his topic today is uh, titled Atauba, which is uh, repentance in uh, Islam. So we'll give you the podium. Uh, Bismillah, Yashik. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see you clearly and we can no, hear my you. screen. My screen. Okay, you wanted to share the screen. Yeah, I think there was. Yes, we can see the screen. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa mawala. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Alahum salli ala muhammad wa ala ali muhammad, kama sallaita ala ibrahim, wa ala ali ibrahim, fila alamina innaka hamidun majid. وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك أمين مجيد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته because of my time um, I would have wished to spend two hours on my lecture or three hours <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a very time conscious person because um, of my training as a TV presenter. Uh, we deal with time. So if you give me 45 minutes, I'm going to summarize my lecture within that 45 minutes. If you give me one hour, I'm going to do it within one hour. If you give me two hours, inshallah, the slide I have here could code for three hours. So. So we'll give, you, we'll give you between 45 minutes to 60 minutes, inshallah. Okay. So I don't want to bore you. So um, well, I think, inshallah, I, I will go through the slide according to the time you are uh, available. 
is that luck I have for the opportunity? It's an opportunity to me because uh, uh, if I am to come to Canada, I'm 100% sure that um, it's going to take me hours and days. So I'm in the comfort of the corner of my room um, and then reaching to the audience over there. So this is an opportunity to me, a very great one, a real one. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it huja for every one of us. Allah um, not against us. Amen. The topic is Tauba, and it is translated in English to be uh, repentance. Uh, first and foremost, let me say that to every topic uh, in Islam, I'm not 100% sure that we could get a synonym, an English synonym that could fit into that topic. One of the word um, available languages that could fit into Arabic is my own uh, dialect, my language, my tribe language, which is Yoruba language. Yoruba language is very rich. And that is why when our fathers were told about Salat, they call it Yoruba. Yoruba language has the ability to create a name where there is no name and it will be unique. So any Yoruba son would know Salat is Yoruba. But ask him to explain what you know is. He may not be able to go further than you know is you know. So what we heard from our fathers, because Yoruba depend much on the uh, the sagacity of the elders, they do say the meaning of you know is anki you anki olorun anki enitoni olorun. We are observing salat or uh, Ibada for the owner of heaven, for the creator of heaven, which very goes with Salat. Salat is not prayer. Prayer, prayer simply means adua, tabi irababa, 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 tabi isure. That's the Yoruba language for adua, because adua also is an English, is an Arabic word. So supplication and prayer goes for Salat. That's why. In Europea, I normally advise my people that don't go to your place of work and tell your boss that I want to go and pray. It's going to take you as an unserious person. Because it's, it's a personal thing. Prayer is a personal thing. He will tell you, I've also prayed. Why can't you pray at home? But you have to tell him, I want to go and observe Salah. It's a duty I hold to my creator. And I must answer that duty five times a day, compulsorily, as at when he wants me to do it. So it's very from prayer. It's not a prayer. Because Salat is an element, it contains an element of prayer, and everyone of us knows that. So the same thing goes for Tauba, which is an Arabic word. I couldn't find any other word in the dictionary except repentance. So let me go by that in order to meet up with my time. What is repentance? Um, I was told that it is the activity of reviewing one's actions or feelings of contrition or regret for past wrong. When you do something wrong in the past, then you have a feeling of regret. But you are trying to review your actions after you might have done the action, then you go through it. Then you are like, why did I do this this way? Why, why didn't I have? So they say that is the meaning of repentance. It's also the fact of showing that you are very sorry for something bad you have done in the past. You have done it before, and you thought, no, this is not good. And a wish that you had not done it. When you wish that you had not done what you did in the past, after going through it, then you saw that, no, I shouldn't have done it this way. So from this definition, repentance simply stands for regret. When you regret what you do, then you are repenting. So that aspect of regret for repentance conforms with the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu collected by our mother Aisha that says, Anadamu Taubatun, Anadamu Taubatun, that the art of um, uh, regret is repentance, or repentance is regret. So when you regret, that means um, you are repenting. So I think we should take that from that um, definition. But, the real meaning of repentance in Islam, which is Tauba, 
In the Arabic word, it comes from the verb of taba yatubu tauban. Um, the Arabic uh, morphologist will tell you that taba is an adjuaf, is a verb that is three lettered, but the third letter will not appear, which is at the middle because it is um, is sick. So it comes from taba yatubu tauban, which simply means that to turn back. That's the meaning to turn back. You were moving in a pace before or focusing at a direction, then you turn back. You focus towards the north, then you turn to the south. You focus towards the east, you turn to the west. That is the meaning of tauba. When you make a reverse or what is known as U-turn, to make a U-turn and change your direction, your focus, that is tauba in Arabic language. That is the language. So in Islamic language, Islamic dictionary, when you say tauba, it simply means for you to always make a U-turn to Allah because our actions, our deeds in life are always defocusing us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We always face elsewhere because we can't see Allah, we don't see Allah, we don't hear Allah. So we do whatever we like. Man by his nature is born or created to focus on what he sees, to focus on what he hears, to focus on what he can touch. That is what we focus on. We don't focus on what we cannot see. We don't focus on what we cannot hear. We don't focus on what we cannot touch. That is why we are very afraid of the camera when we are driving. We are afraid of the policeman when we are driving because we can see them, but we are not afraid of the angels because we cannot see them. So man, by his nature, will always go away from Allah. And Allah's calling is, please come back to me. Come back to me. And why do we have to do that? Why do we have to go back to Allah? Inshallah, I, I will allow this slide to answer those questions. But let me take it according to the slide. Umar ibn Khattab, Ubayyib ibn Kaab, and Muaz ibn Jabal, they all say the meaning of Tawba in Islam is at Tawba to Anasuhu. At Tawba to Anasuhu. This simply means uh, sincere repentance. When you turn back and you focus towards Allah, it must be sincere. He said that is the meaning of Tawba. And Yatuba thumma la ya'uda aw thumma la ya'udu ila them. When you make a U turn back to Allah, you don't even look back. You don't look back to where you are coming from because where you are coming from is filled, is sane. You don't look back at it because you focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just like it is very difficult, and Yaudu, our Yauda Laban, for a woman to take back the milk she already expressed. She can never take it back. She has already given it out. The same way is very difficult for somebody who understands Islam after Tawbah to go back to that sin or to look at the sin. And that's why Sa'id Bunu Musayyab, one of the uh, prominent last Sahaba in Medina and a very key figure in Fiqh, says, Tawbatu tansahu nabiya anfusakum. How Tawbatu, it is the type of repentance we are talking of, is the type that would cleanse or that you use to purify yourself. A, a, a repentance that will purify you and turn you to what people call a tombi, a reborn. Somebody who is just given back to again, just like the way he was given back to the first day by his mother. So that is a rough definition we are going to work with, inshallah, tonight on the issue of um, uh, Tauba. Now, I want to ask this question, and then I just want to make this part participatory within my time. I want um, every one of us here who can write to just write on the chat there. You have the chat column, and if you write there, uh, I think I should be able to see it. Anyway, so what this question is for us. What do you need? What do, why do we need to repent or show you most? You can write your answer. Let me see what your answer is. Why do you think we need to repent? Why do we have to show remorse in what we do? 
So, can I see any answer there by anyone? On the chat button, anybody writing anything? Okay, yes, on the chat button. So I have to obtain Allah's forgiveness. Somebody said, one of the reasons that we need to repent, I need more answers, is to obtain Allah's forgiveness. We repent so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive our sins. Okay, that's, that's a good one. Okay, because we are showing Allah we have violated his right upon us. Yes, that's another good reason. The reason why we have to repent is because we violate his right and we have to show that to him. When we realize that we have wronged our souls, yeah, when we wrong our souls, we have to repent. To get closer to Allah, that's excellent. Allah told us to repent so he forgives our sin. So, so these are some of the reasons. Okay, good. Let's stop on that question one, number one. Go to question number two. Is verbal profession enough? Is verbal profession enough? That is pronunciation of Astagfirullah. Is it enough? We are on question number two now because I we have brilliant people at home here, Alhamdulillah. And then, so let's go uh, to question number two. Verbal profession is not enough. Yes, that's an answer from um, a participant. That's excellent. That person said it's not enough. Uh, no, we need to change our behavior. Said when you say you want to repent your behavior must follow uh that yeah i agree with that too i agree with that okay let's quickly go to question number three the way i'm looking at um, the presentation these five questions are my focus tonight i don't mind i can stop on question number one two three what i intend with this um, my presentation is to drive home the points and then the way you are responding alhamdulillah you are are boosting my morale the more so i don't want to hold back in anything so let's go to question number three does persistence affect repentance when you persist in the sin does that affect your repentance what should be our answer that's question number three does persistence affect that okay i have an answer now on the chat um yes somebody said yes another person said yes it does it affects it Yes, it does. Another person. Yes, and I have another yes. Okay, Jazakumullah khaira. I like that you show me uh, that you follow uh, the topic. So uh, somebody else say that. I think I will take this last one so that uh, since action are bought by intention, yes, it means it is. It is. It is. Okay. Now let's follow this slide and see what the answer is. So we go to the next slide um <clears throat> why do we why are we talking about repentance the first answer is given here on the heading need to repent why do we have to repent back to allah why that's the question so let's see the answers provided here the first thing is because we are human we are human we are not perfect <laughs> we are born to be fallible we err. Uh, it, because to err is human. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Kullu bani Adam Every creature of the children of Adam are fallible. The best of them are those who repent back to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala, who turn back to Allah, who make a U-turn. After falling into error, they turn the steering of their car towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they make Allah their focus. They turn their back at everything. They've started with no matter what the benefit is, no matter what the gain is, no matter what the repetition is, once they turn back from it, that is the end. And they make Allah their focus. Because the reason why we need to repent, the reason why we have to make a repent a cornerstone of our activities every now and then is because that is the only way we can't do because that is where we are created. We are created to do that. We are created to do what? To repent back to Allah. We are created to, go, to, to, to do that. There's another reason here, hidden. And that reason is we all came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We came from Allah. 
Quran chapter 2 verse 156 Allah says inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un we all came from Allah and we are going back to him so if you don't turn back to Allah then you turn your back against Allah then you focus on something else and if you turn your back against Allah then yo that means you are focusing on shaitan and dunya mm. So you are focusing on shaitan and dunya, and that is destruction. So you have to turn back to Allah. That's why in so many verses of the Quran, Allah will always call us to talk, please come back to me. It's like a mother that is shouting on the child, please come back, my son, come, I love you. You don't know what, and the, 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 the son does not even understand what the mother is saying. That is our case. If we came from Allah, why are we running away from him? Every one of us will say that, but we thought that kalima is when we die or somebody dies. In this in the Arabic language, in known that known there is Lilwahid Wagayri, somebody who is speaking on himself and others. That is no that stands for Nahan. We stand, we came from where from Allah, or oh, we belong to Allah in Lilla. That lamb is for possession. We came from Allah. We belong to Allah. We are everything to Allah. We are like tools. Nothing. We are not more than that. Allah can use us for whatever he likes, with or without our, cons our consent. And either we like it or not, because we came in without our uh, consent, we are going back to him without our consent. And let me tell you, the way you were born, the way you will die. Since you will not be informed you are going to come, you are not going to be informed where you are going. You won't be informed. And that's why we have some women that give birth even in the market because they were not told. Some of them give birth at shop mall because they didn't know. Some of them are home because they, some of them in the car because they didn't know. So they, even if you are told the exact date, that doesn't matter. What matters is when Allah SWT wants you to come to this world. The same thing when Allah wants you to go. So people die in bathroom, people die in car, people die in shop mall, people die in aeroplane, people die in everywhere. Just mention it. So if Allah says it is time for you to come back, you have to go back. So somebody that has that power to bring you back, somebody who brought you here without your consent, why are you running away from the person? Why do you run away from him? You run away from him when you face sin, when you back him, when you refuse to follow his dictation, when you are listening to shaitan, to dunya, to yourself and not to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who brought you here. There is a very good example given by one of our Imam. His name is Imam Maududi. This book, I always read the book. Those who know me, they know me with the book. In fact, the Imam is dead. May Allah forgive him and shower mercy on him. It was as if he was still alive. He was still alive and I am with him as the secretary following this book. The book is Linakon Muslimin. Let us be Muslim. The chapter 10 of that book, the title is Why Obey God. I will encourage, I mean, recommend it for everybody. And if you have your children who can read, please allow them to read and you go through the summary yourself with them online. Husband and wife should do it. Chapter 10 of this book, Why Obey God. What does the Imam say? Imam said, one of the reasons why we have to repent is because of our countless relationships that is so deep that if we refuse to repent we are in trouble he said let's start with ourselves your relationship with yourself shows that you have to turn back to allah otherwise you are in trouble you are in trouble because even the way we relate with ourselves is enough uh, huge accountability before allah on the day of judgment we think okay i don't have a problem with myself you have a very big problem with yourself and that is what you don't know that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always refer to, particularly in the Quran, a popular surah we all know, known as Surah to Yasin, Quran chapter 36. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ali yawma today, nakhtimu ala afwaihim, wa tukallimuna aidihim, wa tashadu arjuluhum, bima kanu yaksibun. Allah says, today, we shall seal their mouths, we will seal their mouths. The mouth we used to talk in life, Allah says we are going to sell it. And then, what to kalimuna aidihim? The same thing would allow their hands to talk. Their hands will allow you to talk. 
wa tash'adu arjuluhum bima kanu yaksibun and who also allow their leg to talk on what on what they done Quran chapter 36 verse 65 on that day when your hands are going to speak when your feet are going to talk what do you think they will be talking about no let's ask ourselves that question what do you think they will be talking about don't you remember that they will talk about the pub the pub you went to the party you went to don't you think your hands will reveal all the evil you've done those of us who say oh, okay this is the western world it's not possible it's unlike nigeria this is not africa uh, that it doesn't matter if a man shakes a woman your hands will talk on the day of judgment that that is what you did with me then what will you say we say allah you know i, I was living in the west and then uh, then allah will ask you was the sky different from what you have in africa was the soil the earth different just tell me why are you saying that my power should not be extended to where you are in quran chapter 41 allah express it very well allah explain it in the into details let's check quran chapter 41 surah fusilat verse 19 allah says wa yawma yukhsharu a'da'u llahi ila an-nar fa hum yuz'un on that day when we will gather all the enemies of allah please don't get it wrong when we say enemies of allah we say oh kalam they are not an enemy of allah i didn't demolish the masjid neither did i kill a prophet <laughs> no you are getting it wrong you become an enemy of allah when you turn your back against him and you turn your back against allah when you refuse to listen to his dictation to his law you become enemy number one Allah says hatta idha ma jaa'uha shayda alayhim sam'uhum wa absaruhum on that day these enemies of Allah will be brought to the gates of jahannam and when they are brought to the gate of jahannam they will become crystal clear to them that this is where we are going into fali iyadu billah shayda alayhim sam'uhum their earrings will now testify against them their earrings the ear and the earrings inside the ear will testify against them wa abasaruhum their sight and the eyes which we can see with you have the eyes then you have the sight the two of them will testify against them wa juluduhum and their skin and their skin the skin that covered that is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna lillahi wa inna ilaihi rajiun allah made all our body to be covered with skin allah covered everything with skin shaida alayhim sam'uhum wa absaruhum wa juluduhum their skin in addition to their earrings to their uh, seeing who testify against them on what bima kanu ya'malun on what they do everything you do will be testified against you by your own body so what else do you need how can you hide it is very funny when human being hide when they do their action they forgot that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made enough evidence against you why do you think our foot touches the floor or this the, the soil of the earth allah can make this earth this earth, in the moon there is no gravity there is no pull when you fly up you hang but here you come down why do you have to come down your feet must touch the floor the soil because it's a record against you allah has opened the record the way you walk everything is recorded just like you are recording me when i lift my hand you see it when i lift by when i open my mouth you can see you can hear allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has planned everything before he brought us here everything in verse 20 allah continues wa qalu li juludihim lima sha'itu ma'alayna qalu and we will say to our skin now we are much more concerned about that we will say to our skin lima sha'it to malayna why are you testifying against me why qalu antaqana allah alladhi antaqa kulla shay is not me is not me that is testifying against you is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
that has enabled me with the ability to talk. Allah has enabled me to talk because he was the one that gives the ability to talk to everything he created. He created you at the beginning. At the beginning. And now we are going back to him. Now you are back to him. You see, the confidence that will be garnered by our body is because they came from Allah and they were made subservient to us as servants. We use them the way we like. We use our hands without any query. They cannot say don't, don't. The way we like, they cannot talk, even if they're opposed to it. They're opposed to it. We use our private part the way we like. We use our mouth, our everything we use because they're all under our supervision. Now, when they now return back to their creator, they now have the power, the moral ground to say, to talk, because they are back to the person that created them, not you, that use them mercilessly. Allah says, <laughs> you never thought. You never thought that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make these organs to testify against you. Do you ever think of that? You never thought of that. You never knew that your nails are going to testify against you. You never knew about that. You never knew about your nose testifying against you. Nothing. The only power you have is the power of mouth that can lie. It will be sealed. Sealed. Nothing will come out from the mouth. Allah says, you never thought that your earrings, your sight, your skin will testify against you. You thought Allah does not know what you do. That's our thinking. That's our thinking. We don't know that Allah is all aware. He's Khabir. He called himself Khabir, the all aware. He called himself Raqib, the watchful. We refuse to listen. He said, Allah says, I am watchful. I am watchful. Allah knows what you do. Be careful of the way you act. We are forgetful of that. Allah says, that's your opinion you hold of Allah has brought you to destruction. What is that opinion that you think Allah does not know anything? So you see why I told you that this topic, if I want to deliver it for three, three hours, I can deliver it for three hours because I don't know how to deliver what is in this without going into full explanation. When we are talking of Tauba, it is a serious subject. We are talking of a serious subject. Imam Mujidi said, our relationship with our organs, if on the day of judgment, Allah brought us to account, we can never win. You cannot win. How do you want to win? Tell me how you win. It's not possible. Then our relationship with our parents, how many of us won? Tell me, your father, your mother, they were both happy with you. There was no time. You tell them, mommy, I'm coming back, and you did not come back. There was no time. You say, mommy, I'm coming back, and later you start backbiting and say, ah, mommy's problem is just becoming too much. Old age is catching up with her. Were there no time you said that? Our relationship with our children, do you think we are going to pass, even in this life, our child, one of the, our children will tell us to our face, mommy, you don't like me. Everybody, nobody likes me in this house. More often than not, they say that. Because we cannot satisfy them. We cannot win them. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, Once you are called upon on the day of judgment to give an account of anything, you will be punished. Whatever Allah does not want to punish you on, Allah will just blot it out of your record. Otherwise, once it appears, there's no way you will win because the soldiers of Allah are there to testify against you. Our families, 
What is our relationship with our family? Can we win? Are we so good to them? Are we not just good to those who are good to us? Our neighbors, from what Islam says, are we our community? And it goes on and on and on. That's what Momo would be saying. This is, this is one of the major reasons why we have to go back to Allah. He said, if we don't go back to Allah, all these are enough to take us to hellfire. One of it is enough. That's what we just read now. The Quranic chapters I've given you. You can read it on your own and assimilate the meaning more than the way I've explained it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that ability to understand this one better than uh, the way uh, we see it. So to the next slide. The next slide is also telling us about uh, another issue. And yeah, maybe on the next slide, I'm going to take um, uh, the, the issue of um, <clears throat> need to repent to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in that answering that first question, why do we need to repent to Allah? In Quran chapter 24, verse 31, Allah says, Watubu ila wai jami an ayu al mu'minun la alla kuntu flehun. Oh, you men and women that attribute beliefs to yourself. Oh, you men and women that believe in me. Watubu ila wai jami Repent back to Allah all together. All of you. All of you. Back, back, back to Allah. Enough of your sluggishness, enough of your excuses, enough of, uh, I mean, because of, because of, because of, don't bring excuses anymore. Tubu in Allah, go back to Allah. This verse was in Quran chapter 24, Surah to know. It was it's a very lengthy verse. Allah was talking about hijab to the women. And he enumerated those who can see the ornament, the beauty, everything about women. Allah now said, after you observe these rules and you lower your gaze and you protect your chastity and observe these rules, then you have to come back to Allah and repent because you are bound to make mistakes, even in observing the rules. Watubu ila wai jami an ayu al mu'minun la alla kum tuflehun. In order for you to be successful, in order for you to be rewarded for your action, then you have to you have to repent back to Allah. If you don't repent back to Allah, then you may not get the reward of your action. Because if Allah puts you to question you may not be able to pass. In Quran chapter 66, verse 8, that's a lengthy verse. I may not read everything. But the issue of Taubat and Nasua appeared there for the first time. Ya ayyu alladhina amanu tubu ila wai taubatan nasuha. Oh, you will believe. Repent back to Allah in a sincere repentance. Sincere repentance. Why did Allah mention sincere repentance? Because Allah knows so many of our repentance is not are not based on sincerity. And if it lacks sincerity, then we may not get the reward. So another reason why we have to repent back to Allah, I'm answering question number one, is because Allah would have killed everybody. Allah would have destroyed anybody if Allah go by our sins. Everybody, Quran chapter 16 confirms that, verse 61. If Allah were to take to account every man based on his wrongness, based on his injustice, nobody, nobody would remain in the Lillahi wa inna Myself, yourself would have gone. So what is our pride in this life when our sin is enough to kill us when our sin is enough to wipe off wipe out our good deeds what is the about saying what is our gule gule nothing wallahi nothing 
This is Quranic verse, chapter. I'm not adding to it. Check it yourself, chapter 16, verse 61. Walau yu aakhidu Allahu If Allah were to take everybody to account by his injustice, ma taraka alayha min daba. No daba. No human will be left. Everybody would have gone. Walaki you are um ila ajalim musamma. What if Allah did not destroy us? Is it because he's afraid? No. If Allah did not destroy us, has he forgotten the sin we committed? No. Has he also forgiven the sins? No. Allah deliberately give respite to everybody according to his own time, according to our own time. You have your respite attached to the time you will die. When it is time, when it is your own appointed time, when it is my own appointed time, I cannot delay it for a second. Now can I bypass it for a second? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajim. Do you see why we have to go back to Allah? When, when we have the time, <laughs> you see why we have to go back to Allah? When we talk about the issue of repentance, it's not an issue of optional. It's compulsory. Compulsory. And in verse 83, that one is even more scary. Chapter 8, total and, and 5, verse 33. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ I will not destroy them. I will not punish them. I will not wipe them off when you are with them, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ I will not take them away when they are seeking for forgiveness. Those are the two things. Now we have one. The prophet had left, only one remained. That was what made Barakah to burst into tears the day Surah Nasr was revealed. Because after the demise of the prophet, no more protection. We only have one protection, and that is Istighfar. How many Istighfar is going from Europe to heaven every day? Tell me. How many Istighfar from Canada, from Australia, from Austria, from America is going to heaven every day? How many? as compared to the sin. Let's forget about the sin. Let's talk about the number of istighfar. Even in the Muslim community, in those areas I've mentioned, in Africa, in Asia, in the Middle East, how many istighfar goes up in every Muslim home? How many have you done today? How many have I done today, istighfar? وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ It is not ozone layer that is protecting this life from destruction. It is not. <laughs> it is not. <laughs> that's, that's stupidity. <laughs> stupidity. This is what is protecting. Still far. It doesn't take a lie. Second, if you don't learn from the COVID, then you have to think now. This is to tell you that something worse than this is with Allah. Something worse than this is with Allah. Now the family can sit together. Allah can bring another disease that will not allow the family to sit together. The man will be confirmed, confined to a room. The wife will be confined to a room. And the children, each of them, to every room. And we have to speak on phone. We must not meet. Do you think Allah does not have such? It can happen. Either you believe COVID is man-made or natural. Whatever your belief is, is not the question. The question is the reality on ground. It can happen. If it is man-made, it would, wouldn't have happened if Allah does not permit it. Because this is, this is the dominion of Allah. Allah is the owner of earth and heaven. So nobody can do anything. Nobody can fumble on any discovery except by the permission of Allah. I will leave you with that and we go to the next slide, which answers other questions because if I want to
take much time on that question. Question number one, it may eat much of our time. Let's go to, is verbal profession enough? Is it enough for us to profess uh, Iman? The answer here too is no, just like many of us have answered. No, it is not. Uh, if heart and body do not participate, if you say it, but in your heart, deep down you, there is nothing like repentance. And deep down you, there is repentance. Your mouth say it, your tongue say it, but your body does not agree with them. You know, you won't get it. The three must follow. If your heart believes it, and then your body follows, but your tongue did not say it, no. The three, there must be conquered within them. It becomes hypocritical utterances when you say it without your body and your mind. Quran chapter 3, Surah al Munafikun, verse 6. Sawa'un alayhim astaghfaruta lahum. Allah says it's the same. If you, Prophet, seek for forgiveness for them, you seek for forgiveness for them, or you left them on their own to do it themselves, Allah will never forgive them. Why? Because they are transgressors, they are criminals. Al Fasik Bimana Al Mujirimu. Crimina. That's mean of Fasik. A Fasik called Yakunu Muminan. If you are a criminal, you can be a Muslim. There are so many criminals that are Muslims. A Fasik could be. And that's why here the Munafikun are not the polytheists. They are Muslim. They are believers. They believe today, they are kufar tomorrow. Allah says the reason why Allah will never forgive them is because they are fasikun. They are criminals. They are criminals. Why are they criminals? <laughs> because they commit crime every now and then against Allah, the owner of heaven and earth. In chapter 9, Surah to Tawbah, verse 80, Allah says, Astaghfir lahum aw astaghfir lahum or istaghfir lahum aw la tastaghfir lahum either you seek forgiveness for them or you refuse in tastaghfir lahum sab'ina marra if in a day you seek forgiveness of Allah for them 70 times Allah will never forgive them. If you understand the Arabic language, land, that land that is attached to that far is no is known as nofiul abadi. Never. Allah will never do it. Allah will never forgive them. Telling the prophet that 70 times, if you open your mouth to say, Oh, Allah forgive them, Allah says, I will never forgive them. Why? Because there is no concord between their utterances their action, which is their body, and their heart. It's, it's not a matter of astagfirullah, astagfirullah, astagfirullah. This is the prophet that is better. His own one astagfirullah is enough for the whole world. Allah says, I will not accept it. Because they go against, or they went against the law of Allah and his prophet. They won't follow it. They say, no, Sharia cannot be applied in Europe. Sharia cannot be applied in uh, Asia. Sharia cannot be applied in Middle East. This is not Africa. In the same ending, they are criminals and Allah will never guide them. They are criminals, Allah will never guide them. So verbal utterances is not enough. It's not enough. So they have to do some other thing beyond verbal utterances. Because if it is only verbal utterances, then Allah will forgive them. But no, Allah said no. So I think I've um, jumped a slide there. Yeah. Persistence and sins. What does that mean? That's question number three. Does our persistence in sin affect repentance? If we keep on, yes, it affects it. Surah al chapter 56, verse 46. Allah says, وَكَانُوا يُسِرُّونَ عَلَى الْحِنْثِ الْعَظِيمِ 
Allah says they persist in committing sin. Why would I forgive them? Why would I forgive them when they continue committing sin? And even if I forgive them, they, they commit another sin. Just exactly the way they did at the beginning. And I said, the start of okay, I forgive them. And they come back again. They do the same thing. And it wasn't as if the reason why they were sinning against Allah was because Allah was not good to them. No, 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 no. Verse 45. Allah says they were in affluence. They have home that other people don't have. Other people's human like them are homeless. They can see it. They can see and they go by the blind men. They were married and they can go by those who were not married. They saw or they see those who are widows. They see the divorcee, but they are married. They have happy married life and they see those who are always fighting every now and then. They have fathers and they can see those who don't have fathers. They have children. They can see those whom Allah has not blessed their womb. Yet, they dictate. They unpick Allah's law. They see what is happening in Africa. Those who are in the midst of uh, in the midst of quantities, yet they lack just one thing. You have 1,000 things and you lack just one of it. You only need one and you cannot get it. What is it that we don't have in Africa? How many people have been trying to come to Europe? I know what I went through when I was about coming to Europe. Dr. Abdubasis is a witness to that. So now I'm here, and I will, I'll be dictating to Allah. <laughs> Astaghfirullah. In chapter 3, verse 135, Allah says, one of the reasons why they will get my my istighfar, my forgiveness, is because they have these qualities. Whenever they commit an act of evil, or they wrong themselves or their own soul. They remember Allah. And they seek for Allah's forgiveness. Nobody can forgive except Allah. But what is the condition? The condition that made Allah to forgive them was because they refused to persist in that sin. They don't, they don't, they go, they don't go back to it again. When they know that this is sin, they don't go back to it, they run away from it. These people will receive Allah's forgiveness. Verse 136. So persistence does it really affect our tawbah if we keep on. What are the steps we need to take in forgiveness? I think I should have like five more minutes. Could you just let me know how many minutes I have so that I can just go through the slide? I'm sorry, I couldn't see the time on the recording. Yeah, you have about 10 to 15 minutes. Exactly. Steps in repentance. In the Islamic palace, we call it Shuru to Tauba. These are conditions for gaining Allah's repentance, forgiveness. It is three steps, or there are three steps. The first one, to take off from sin. You take off. Start your car and you move. You don't stop your engine. Run. Number two, you regret the past. Not just running away from the sin. As you are running, you are crying. You cry on your soul. And not just crying, you have to determine. That's number three. Not to return to it. 
irritated in the sin involve human if it is human being you sin against not god then the condition increases by one you had one more to it four conditions you restore the rights if it is the right you took away you took somebody's money go and return the money before after fuller go and return the money if you bite bite in then you try to bring him back. If your character assassinated him, then you try to say good things about him. That is, even if you cannot go to him and say, I backbited you yesterday, then go to those you told about him yesterday. Try to say, you say, but you said, no, I think I made a mistake when I was talking about him yesterday. No, that's not the way he is. Try to bring his fame back, just like you destroyed when he was not there. If it is money you took from him, you return it back. You don't need to put your, your name. Just send it to his account. That's okay. And if it is the wife you had kind of affair with, say Istigifar, scholars do say you cannot go to him and say, I have something with your wife. That may even cause more problems. Say Istigifar, and you never go back to that. Maybe. Step number one, al-ikilau anidhamb. How do you run away from sin? One of the scholars do says, He said four things you have to do if you want to take off from sins. Ali istighfar bil lisan. You have to use your tongue to say istighfar. Wale aqilahu bil abdan. You take off with your body, the whole of your body. You pull it off away from that thing. You take it off. You don't allow a part, even your finger, your nails, even the one you cut off from your uh, nails, you don't drop it there. You rush away. Wa idimaru tarkil audi. And in your mind, your intention is you will never go back. And if you are within the midst of bad peers or colleagues or friends that influence you to commit that sin, you just dissociate yourself from them. Either on the platform or dissociate away from them. Physically, dissociate away from, away from them environment you move away from where they are you remember the case of the man that killed people and he was told to leave where he was for another country that's just the case another scholar say and yes jack feel a bit listen why and i'm going call it why you music bill badan is for you to seek for forgiveness with your sons as the ruler and then you use your own mind to regret inside you you regret why you music and you use your hand and your whole body to hold on to the farm. He said that is the step. The second step to regret. What does it mean? If your regret is truthful, if you are not lying, that means you will not go back to that sin. But if you go back to the sin, that your regret is a lie. And if your remorse is very important and very truthful, you would have that determination, that opinion that you will never go back to such thing. And with this, then, then with this, it means your tauba is complete because all the conditions are available. Then, factors that age repentance. Knowledge of God and remembrance after ignorance. When you do something and you now have the knowledge of God. You see, let me bring in a bit of philosophy here. Socrates do say that nobody will openly commit crime. And they held him responsible. What do you mean? People, some people kill, and because they, they kill, they lie, they hide the instrument they used to kill. Some of them run away. It's because they know. He said, No, he said they don't know. He said, level of knowledge are two. Sometimes you know, but you don't know the repercussions, the consequences of what you are doing. If you know you can never commit such crime and then go scot free, even if you are not caught the first year, even if you are not caught when you are alive, you'll be caught when you are dead. So, and he was right. People commit sin out of ignorance. We don't know. If you know the consequences of what you are doing, that you can never escape judgment, be it man or spiritual or God, you can never escape. Then why are you committing sin? Why? Allah says in Quran chapter 4, Innama tawbatu ala Allahi lilladhina ya'maluna su'a bija'ala The type of repentance Allah will accept 
is the repentance coming from those who commit it out of ignorance. And immediately they know, immediately, they seek for Allah's forgiveness. So, and that's why Mujahid in his translation, he said, He said, anybody who out of ignorance commits sin, such person at Tayanzia and Marciati would quickly, immediately go away from sins once he knows. And that's how you know that. Did, are you doing it deliberately or not? What about those of us that commit sin deliberately and we still justify it because we want to prove to people that we know what we're doing? And you have been in Islam for ages. Shut up, what do you mean? No, it's not about that. Forgiveness and tawbah is about piety, it's about your relationship with Allah. Where do you put Allah? To be afraid of Allah's decision. Lehaufin <coughs> min You can never be assured. Allah can do and undo. Yes, He won't be unjust, but He can do and undo because He, he, he is not afraid of anybody. Quran chapter 24, verse 58 to 59. Another factor is that Allah says we have to be hopeful. We have to be hopeful. You see, when you commit sin and you need to seek for forgiveness, don't think Allah can never forgive you. You see, Abla ibn Abbas reported the case of people. He said, Unaka unasun min ali shirk. He said, people during the time of Jailiyah, when they were committing shirk, kanu kodi kotabi, they killed so many people. Wa aktharu. So many people they killed. Was that no? Wa aktharu. And they committed zina. And to so many people they did this too. Muhammadan. After Islam prevailed, they came to the Prophet in This religion you are talking of, and you ask us to embrace. Hey, Lahasanun is good, but we want you to give us this information. If any of us want to embrace Islam, do you think our sins will be forgiven? I have killed 50 people. I have committed zina with so 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 so. Then Allah revealed this verse. Those who have never committed shirk with Allah, they've never killed his soul that Allah has made for him for them. And they say, You see, they've never committed sin. We have done all these three. Then Allah says, No, no, that is not enough. Allah now revealed this verse, the one that is chapter 39, verse 53 above. Ya ibadilladhina asrafu ala anfusihim My servants that have wronged themselves La taqunatu min rahmatillah Don't ever be hopeless of Allah's mercy Inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jami'a Once you are still alive, that means Allah wants to forgive you Allah can forgive any sins Why? Because when Allah forgives you, Allah will also be merciful to you. So let's be hopeful of Allah's forgiveness and run towards Him. And this is the time, the time of Lelatul Khalid. What are the fruits we gain? The first thing we gain is when you repent sincerely, you have dawa muta'allum bidam. You have pain of the sin you've committed. You will never joke with it. You feel pain within yourself. You see, you remember the case of uh, uh, of Zaid, the, the case of Zaid, when uh, uh, Adi was about to be killed. He was there, but he couldn't do anything. He was a Muslim. Whenever he remembers that thing, he will just faint. He will faint. You see, that is that is the real meaning of repentance. And whenever he faints, he will say. Why do you think he said because I couldn't assist my brother when he was helpless? If Allah asked me on the day of judgment and you said you belong to the same Islam, why didn't you assist him? What would I say? So, as against those who remember their sins and they will be choking with it, they will be happy. <laughs> ah, that's that's not number two. One of the fruits of sincere repentance is you will hate and dislike going back to that sin. You wouldn't want to. And you will never want to go back to the sin. Not to talk of those who say, let me show you how we used to do it when we were when we doing it. No. Number three, it will cleanse off your record. If you are the type that seek for forgiveness, 
then your record will show that you have no sin again. Number four, your good deeds will be recorded and your evil deeds will be wiped off everything. At Taubatu, Minzambi, Iya, Bifele, the Dehi, and you will be doing good deeds. You won't do evil again. You'll be doing good deeds. You will not even find it easy to do evil again. Number five, multiple reward from Allah. What are the multiple rewards? Five of them. Allah will forgive you. Allah will accept you. Allah will give you Iman. Allah will make you to be doing good deeds. Then Allah will guide you. All those are in Quran chapter 20, verse 82. And Allah used the case of our, our father Adam. He committed only one sin, but Allah gave him two positions, three positions. Allah said, Thumma jatabahu rabbuhu fataba alayhi wa hada. Allah anointed him. Allah chose him. Allah forgive him. That's the second one. And Allah guided him. So, thank you for the opportunity. Jazakumullah khaira. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept this into we presented tonight as an act of ibadah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. Uh, we thank uh, our Sheikh uh, Ustaz Zarun Thani for that soul uplifting, soul lifting uh, lecture. It feels like I should just let him continue for the next few weeks. But uh, I know that uh, they are in the, I think after midnight there in Europe. And we really appreciate you for the time that you have uh, spent with us. Uh, and uh, I would want us to uh, take everything that Afa has told us as uh, the absolute truth. I remembered uh, when I was uh, one of his students in Anajat, where I used to lecture. As a medical student, I, I was attending that uh, madrasa. Uh, you can see the kind of uh, lectures that Afa Arun uh, is uh, known to give. May Allah continue to bless him. Um, I don't know why my video is not showing. Can you guys see me? We can see you. It's showing. We can see okay, you. Okay. Okay. Okay, I can't see myself, so I told me that I was off. So I really- Because I really, it's still uh, sharing. Okay, it's still sharing, okay. So I really uh, want us to take some questions uh, from our brothers and sisters on the uh, online. And if you cannot ask your questions, uh, Verba team, you can uh, send a private uh, question to the lecturer, uh, or you can send it to me privately or to any of the uh, executive members uh, who are on and they would read the question out. Um, so would I give uh, the podium to the Amir to coordinate those questions and answers. Bismillah. Brother Daoud. Assalamu alaikum wa So if, we, uh, if anybody has a question, you can unmute yourself or you can type the questions or you can raise up your hands as well. Do you guys have any question? Aisha? Is those, does that mean that everything that the star said is uh, well understood? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, think yeah. well, I think Sister Zena Barua wants to ask a question. Go ahead, Sister. So my question is I am not in the act of like praying out loud, verbally. When I'm praying, like when I'm staying my Istigafur, like Astagafur and all of that, I usually will say it to my mind. I don't want it out. And sometimes when I'm saying my duas as well, I don't stay. So does that mean like the prayers that I've said before will not be accepted? Or 
like going forward i need to always like say everything verbatim what do you mean like saying it in your mind is also it being on your tongue i just wanted to clarify that moving forward thank you okay no it will be accepted but you are also uh advised by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at least every day to say astaghfirullah 100 times every day uh, excluding the three 15 times you will say after the end of salat when you say salam alaikum wa rahmatullah salam alaikum wa rahmatullah the first you have to say is astaghfirullah 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 three times so when you times that by five that's 15 times in the day so then you need to do 100 every day so there are arguments you can make the 100 add 75 to the 15 or you make the 100 independently of the 15 you made after every solar the three three after every solar but after that then your history file continues and if if we get to a level your slogan of zikr will be history file i know a brother and ask that for if he opens the door and somebody just ask that for <laughs> if he wants to start his car and then the car is not ask that for it has become astaghfirullah is his slogan. So istighfar will become your slogan. Uh, so my advice to you now is, since you started with the mind that is excellent, then add the tongue to it, inshallah. Uh, any more questions, guys? No, I have a question. No. Now, Ustaz, what uh, advice can you give to someone whom, when he's alone, he remembers Allah that, oh, I'm, I'm not going to commit, continue to commit these sins again. But when he's, he's with his friends or his colleagues at work, he becomes relaxed again and starts committing it. Yeah, one of the advice given by Mujahid, you know, I read it out, is that um, he has to do away with those friends those friends that are not helping me out helping him out but as for the colleagues at work yeah you there's nothing you can do to that except you get another job so while you are still there if you can get another job no problem if you cannot then you have to practice what is known as aslu ala aslu fi niyati in his mind he will be there facing his job but he will pretend as if he's not in that environment and then if you do that consistently, they will know you for what you are without even saying anything. And then, Alhamdulillah, you will be able to escape their rods. But for the friends, no, he has to do away with them immediately because they won't help him out. And we know one thing in Islam, either you do away with your friend or not, even those who are good, on the day of judgment, you will still be enemy of one another. Friends on that day will become enemies of one another. Even parents will be enemies of their children. So don't keep friends that would make you to commit sins. Jazakallah Karen. What's the position of uh, Salatul Tauba on the concept of Tauba in Islam? Yeah, Salatul Tauba is just like ending your day with Istighfar, reminding you that before you go to bed, if you remember that one of the dua taught by the Prophet when we go to our bed is for us to say Allahumma bismika wa da'atu jambi O Allah by your name I'm back at home to rest to sleep wa bismika arfa'u and if I wake up is by your leave in am satta nafsi if you take my soul while I'm sleeping faghfir laha please forgive my soul wa in arsaltaha and if you allow me to witness tomorrow Guide my soul to move along with righteous companions. And that goes with the advice I gave earlier. So you have to move with righteous people. And it was said that if you move with bad companies, it's better for you to die than to go along with them. So um, that dua simply shows that uh, the Salatul Tawbah will prepare you. Salatul Tawbah is like preparing you that I may die. If I sleep, I may wake up. That's for Salat al -Dua. It's not just for seek, seeking for forgiveness. It's a reminder, it's an admonition for every Muslim. Because um, the replica of death is our sleep. Yeah. 
Jazakallah Khairan. Um, uh, Dr. Ms. Adi Amy ha, uh, has a question. Bismillah. Yes, Salam Alaikum. Wa Alaikum. Wa Alaikum. Wa Alaikum. for the soul searching uh, presentation. My question has to do with um, someone who neglects uh, Salat. So if you neglect your Salat, perhaps through, because of laziness, um, how do you then repent? I do know that if you neglect maybe for during the day, you know, people will combine everything at the end of the day and say, okay, I'll start a full life. Now, if you do it for one week, what's the process of, you know, yeah, because we have kids that do that. They, you know, they neglect and say, okay, mom, I'm not, it's over already. So I want you to please um, explain how they can repent and not perhaps go back the process. Okay. I have another question. You mentioned uh, one of the book, Why We Obey God. You said we should read chapter 10. It's very good. But you didn't mention the author. The so, name of the book is Let Us Be Muslim. Oh, I see. Okay. So if you go on Google now and you type it out, you will download it immediately. Okay. Let Us Be Muslim. I get the electronics copy. Let Us Be Muslim. The name of the author is uh, Abulala Maududi. Just write Maududi okay. as the name of the author. Once you put the name there, Let Us Be Muslim. So okay. read the chapter 10. That's in uh, reference to the lecture, but the old chapters are excellent. Okay. The old chapters are excellent. I personally, I'm a youth worker here, and that's what I do with the youth. That book is the book I treat with them. <laughs> and I'm assuring you, you can never treat that book with any youth, and you will regret. Wallahi, take it as a book you will discuss with them. Even you as a mother, take it from chapter one. Chapter one is... Uh, uh between islam and kufru you enjoy that book you enjoy that book from one to, and i don't mind whenever you stumble on any question anything you want to just inform the organizer they would let me know i will be available to explain it to you because it was as if i'm the one that wrote the book okay. i've been using that book for the past 25 30 years now inshallah so um to answer your question even that book will help you allow them to read a chapter in the book that chapter is the meaning and importance of salat is in that book the meaning and importance the problem those youth have is they don't understand why they observe salat i'm going to answer that question in two ways if you are talking about a child under the parents it is the job of the parents Allah says instruct your family your household to observe salat but be patient with them in fact, it is solar that we have to devise method. I, I used to practice whatever I read in the Torah with those youth here. And deliberately, when I came to Europe, I said, I want to go and study youth work. I want to see the way these children are thinking. And now, maybe because of my background in philosophy, I'm also a youth, despite my white hair, because I know the way they think, I know their psychology. So some of them, what I did in my own area, I deliberately bought a seven-seater car and then we used to have fun every Saturday. Saturday, we go to pitch to play ball. So while we are playing ball, we finish at the time of school, we play Zor. The next day, that's how I started with them. Then we have an appointment of, okay, who's going to wake up for Fajr? And these people are the, those who are not even observing Salat, regardless with their parents. Now I'll pick them one after the other. The seven of us will go to Salat, even at 3 a.m., at 2 a.m., at 2.30 a.m. So what I'm bringing out of that is that the youth, they need lecture, they need monitoring, they need encouragement. Those are the three things. You can't give them lecture without encouraging them. Without, you can't encourage them without monitoring them. They won't do it. So if you are not ready to do those three things, you may not achieve what you want to achieve. While you are doing that, you also monitor them, you also admonish them, you also advise them. So that is what I think the problem of the youth is. For those who are matured enough, their own problem is not encouragement. Their problem is they don't understand the essence of what they are doing. They don't know that the solace you observe outside the time, you don't get the reward. And if you refuse to observe it, you'll be punished. That's it. That's why the solace you observe to time is known as Ada. You do it to time. The solace you observe outside, they call it Kodor. You pay debt. So if you pay debt, are you going to be given any reward? No reward for paying debt. So Ada is what Allah wants from us. Ada, observe solar to time. That's enough solar. That's why when Allah was introducing solar in Quran, he said, Kitaban 
mawqutan. And he used it a la code. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deliberately used those sentences for us to capture the essence. He said, Allah says, this solat is compulsory to observe it to time. You see that now? So if one is because of job, there was a sister here who came to me one time and she was like, they caught me while I was observing solat and they said, if I don't stop, they will stop me. So what should I do? I said, continue your solat. They caught her the second time and then they gave her option and you can go. Then she left because of solat. So I said, I know that Allah will never forsake you for that. A month later, she got a phone call from one of the management that in that called her to query. One of them that called her to query called her. Uh, please, I want to speak to Mrs. Says, okay, say, were you the one? So she said, yes. Could you just meet me? So 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 stand. Said, I'm so 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 person. They met. Said, I understood from that day when we had discussion with you that you were so much staunch in your belief about observing so like, Are you still like that? He said, yes. I want to give you a job. I need people like you in my place of work. Those who believe in God, now he's working there now. <laughs> and she's given a room. You can't imagine. The man gave her a room. You know these white people, they are wearing people. <laughs> he gave her a room. said, if you believe in God, I need you here. I need somebody <laughs> who is not in camera, but in God. Allah, Allah, Akbar. That's how it works. We have one of our father here. If I mention the name, Dr. Bayer is knowing very well. Allah, he did he got a job in a filling station and he said he met after the interview then he has been given the job then he said i have a i have a proposal so what is this so he said my request is I, I don't touch alcohol i don't sell alcohol i cannot even touch he said ah. they all look at him just a filling station you have to say he said not only that even cigarettes i can't touch it that's what i believe in <laughs> at him because i said uh, yeah sorry you can't do without it. You have to do that here. So that means, do you want to take the job or leave it? He said, I will leave the job. While he was going, the same thing happened. One of the manager came out and met him. He said, come. He said, are you true with what you say? He said, yes. Okay. Do you want to work elsewhere? Aside there, he said, yes. I'm going to give you another place that is under my own control. Nobody can say anything about that, but with a condition. You cannot work during the day. You have to work during the night. And that night, you start work at 10 and finish at 6. Is that okay? He said, that's what I want. The first day he resumed, the manager put at the door, every 10 o'clock, they will put there, please, no more sale of alcohol and uh, cigarettes. 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> by 6 a.m., this man will be relieved by somebody else. He has been working there for the past 11 years. Alhamdulillah. So, Allah, what I'm saying, they are, the, they are the good side of it. The other side may come for trial. But we don't even want to face any trial. We just want everything to go smoothly. So for those of us who are old enough to know what we come to do in this world, please take your solar serious. Without solar, you are nothing. The Sister Ajara has been raising her hands. I will take uh, Sister Fusina after that. Sister Ajara, Bismillah. Salaam alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum. Um, so with respect to um, our body having rights over us, how do you explain the concept of like when you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your heart is like grieving for the fact that, yeah, Allah, I've committed um, this much sin on the day of resurrection? Like, um, like, how do you explain it that you're merciful towards your heart and your body? Like, don't overdo it, in a sense. Yes, you are not the one that explained don't overdo it. Allah himself explained it. You see, in Islam, lack of duty is punishable. Going to the extreme is also punishable. You are supposed to be at the middle. That's where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put us. Wakana bayna dhalika kawama. Alladhina idha anfaku lam yusrifu wa lam yakuturu. Wakana bayna dhalika kawama. Everything about us is just at the middle. Not too extreme to the right, not too extreme to the left. In Quran chapter 20, Allah says, Toha ma anzalina alayka al Quran al Tashko. I've not revealed the Quran for you to be a failure. Illa tadkiratan liman yaksha. When the Prophet was putting upon himself so many burdens, Allah says, No, don't put so many burdens on yourself. You cannot do beyond what I give to you. So Islam explains that you should have uh, mercy on yourself. But having mercy on yourself, does not mean you should not attain the lay down principle of Sharia. For example, 
If you just throw out the last 10 days of Ramadan not to sleep in the night, that is not a burden on your soul because Islam requires that. You have example of those who have done that. You have shining example from the Quran that you can do that. And you sleep during the day, no problem with that. If you know you have the opportunity to do that. And if you divide your night into three, you pick one to observe the salat and the two to sleep, no problem. Just Quran explained that. Ya ayu and Muzemil, kumi leila ila kolila, nisfahu, awun kusmino kolila, awzid alay, warotil Quran at tartila, inna sanulaki alay kakol and sakila. So there is no approach you use, in as much as you follow the Quran or the Sunnah that you will be going to the extreme. And you will be said that you are not merciful on your soul. But if you go outside those, you may not be doing as much as you're supposed to be. Wallahu a'lam. Jazakum la khairan, Sheikh. Uh, we'll take Sister Fusena now. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum la khairan, Sheikh, for the lecture. In fact, um, I'm really happy for this lecture because you mentioned something that you've been doing. I think um, most of the sheikhs and ustas and ustadas in the Islamic communities should emulate. I, uh, like you said, you, t you pick up these kids and you take them out on a social adventure, but at the end of the day, you are able to bring them back to Islam, which I think is a very, very good thing which we should be doing more in our community. Um, and um, I think it's an eye opener for, for all of us to like look at it that way. Also, I think some of the things that we do that um, maybe pushes our, the kids away from Islam, uh, knowingly or knowingly, it's um, bringing them down, like letting them have confidence selves even though we know they don't know when they make mistakes i think we should be able to uh correct them in the in a polite way but not in a way that they will feel less confident of themselves um uh, so how do we is there any way or any um books or things that we can learn from that to learn how to uh, teach most of our kids or help them to be more confident and be confident about being uh, Muslims in especially those ones in this part of the world um, so that they can uh, understand why they need to pray and why they should be um, they, they, why they need to pray and also uh, be proud to be Muslims in this part of the world thank you that's a very lengthy question. And then um, uh, what happened is that, um, like I said, on my arrival here, I need to get a job. And but everything started with my children. And then um, I observed that his age mate at that time should be like seven year old. So all of them have this problem of um, why, why, why question and disobedience. The type of obedience we give to our parents in Africa, I'm not, we are not seeing it with them. And so we start complaining that ah, these children, they are very stubborn, they are very this, they are very that. Then the first thing I did was that, maybe like I said, because of my training in philosophy, so if you want to, if you are discussing with somebody, you must know where that person is taking, is our ideas from. If you don't know, that's what causes argument, even between husband and wife. The husband, the wife may be taking her own argument from uh, well, well B, and the, the husband will be taking it from well A. You won't reach the same thing. But if you know that, okay, this is where he's taking his argument from. We call it, we call it a um, uh, metaf metaphysical standpoint. And that shapes our perception, the way we look at issues. So I want to get the metaphysical standpoint of these children. Where are they taking their ideas from? Then the first thing I discovered was that it is from school, from school. How do I know? I start going through their uh, textbooks, the textbooks they use at school. I start going through it. Then I found that one of those textbooks, particularly in primary school, 
is to sharpen them and teach them to be rude. Why they are training them to ask questions, they are training them to be rude. Unknowingly or knowingly, I wouldn't know. I have the name of the books, I have the name of the author. And then they, they, they depicted two characters in the books. One was very good, but the one that was very good would never have his way. But the bad one will always have his way. So this man will always want to emulate that bad one because he always have his way. Whatever he wants, he will get it, even in a good way. I said, okay. So this is where this issue is coming from, this issue of stubbornness and disobedience. So we have to. Then I start reading the book and I start sharing the content with them in class. So because they know I read what they read, they respect me. <laughs> they ask me questions. They come to me. And then that's how we start. Second issue for those of them that are boys, I engage them in physical uh, uh, exercises. I so much love football. And then we start playing football together. And that's how we become friends. And the third step I took was that I am an affair. Instead of me working for somebody, I just created my own um, employment and I started my madrasa and I started teaching them Quran. So with those three steps, we meet on the field, we play football together, we read books that they read, we share ideas, and then I teach them Quran. So definitely everything. So that's what is happening. And then uh, it's not, I'm telling you my sister, it's, it's more than the way I just said it now. This is my seven years. It's more than the way I said it. I know what I went through. It's not easy. Wallahi Allah, it's not easy. Some of my friends that I met, yeah, they told me at the point of entrance that after you arrive, we started Mudrasa, but we cannot continue because you'll be frustrated. I said, okay, no problem. And I am frustrated, but because of Allah's guidance and assistance, Alhamdulillah, I didn't go out. The rest of them went out, but I didn't go out. I still have my Mudrasa and I still teach my Quran. And Alhamdulillah, some of them are coming. So the job is not a day job. Somebody must be ready to sacrifice. Not everybody wants to sacrifice. I want to build house in Ikoi, the way you also have house in Ikoi. I have my family to live with. I have my wife also. I have things to do. I'm a human being like you. I breathe the way you breathe. And then, <laughs> so it's not easy, but it is doable. It's doable. Wallah is doing. And if we refuse to do it, if somebody is not doing it, the job will be left undone. And we will all see the repercussions of Allah. Allah. Lastly, even those who are doing it, they need to be trained again because people will discourage them. The environment will discourage them. And you'll be surprised that you are here to help, but people are still condemning you. Some of the children will also discourage them, while a host of them will appreciate it a lot. And you'll be happy that Alhamdulillah that you started the job. And Allah will never in any way deprive you of the reward. That I'm 100% sure. He just wants you to show sign of commitment and Allah will take the rest. I don't know if I've answered your question in that manner. But even if I've not answered it, if you have those who are in charge of your youth there, no problem. We can have a counseling session because that's my job I do. If we don't mind having that with them, no problem. We we'll have a conversation. We'll we talk about it, the problems, what they face, what they should be doing with them. Each locality has its own peculiarity. And what I got to learn, apart from what we learn in the Arabic and the Islamic literatures, the environment here, you need to study the way they deal with their children. And that's what the youth work is all about. So that youth work really assisted me in understanding my environment and the people. I am dealing with. I always like to identify with the youth because they are the prime of the society. And our legacy, when we leave Canada, we leave Dublin, we leave UK, it's our children. If we are not able to put them on the same pedestal, may Allah forgive us. Uh, I'm sure we're going to bring you back anyway. So uh, the next person to ask question is Brother Ibrahim. Bismillah. Mm. Alaikum. My question would be, what would be your response by way of advice to uh, someone who listens to this lecture or any other type of Islamic lecture and uh, you know, in his mind probably concludes and says, oh, with all this that I'm hearing, this Islam is too difficult to, uh, to practice. It, it, it requires or demands of you so many things to do. What would you 
what would be your response by way of advice to that person? Um, that's a great deal uh, because um, nothing good comes easy. Nothing good comes easy. Uh, I don't know your profession. For example, if I want to use you as an example, if you're an engineer, you know what you went through before you become what you had to be. Um, I know Dr. Dubai is very well. I know what he went through before he is what he is today. I know so many other people there, maybe even the president. At least I can still remember some things about him. The time when he used to just to listen to lectures, he has to walk miles because during those days, 25 years ago, there were no uh, uh, transportation the way it used to be now. You have to walk. even then there were no Okada in Nigeria. They, you have to walk down, trek down, and from school they will come because that's the only center you can learn. So to become something good does, doesn't come easily. Muhammad Ali was saying that to his daughter. Muhammad Ali is the, the legendary. Mm -hmm. Uh, boxer. Mm -hmm. He was telling his daughter, he said, my daughter, have you ever seen something so precious uh, just on the platter of gold? He said, for example, gold. You can't just be going on the street and pick gold where you pick pebbles. So it's not easy. You have to go deep down the water. Then he said, so you are precious than gold and you are precious than anything. So don't just be easy for men. Cover yourself up. He was trying to explain the meaning of hijab to her. So this is the explanation we have to give to people who say Islam is very difficult. Ask them, tell them to give you an example of, use their own job. Try to study their vocation. Who are you? Are you a carpenter or you're a bricklayer or you are a doctor or you're an engineer, accountant? Then tell me your story, how you get here. Don't even relate it with the religion. Ask him, be interested in them. Then they will tell you stories. A brother here once told me the way he got to Dublin. He said he went through the eyes of death in Germany. He came through Germany to Dublin. If he all, he, I, I told him, I will always want to tell your story to this youth. Whenever he's around, I will call the youth. Where I come and listen to to some brother. The way he came to Dublin, he said he went through the eyes of death. And everything happened within 24 hours through the night. Mm. And then, our last one of the last thing protected him. So people have, and if you look at your own case, how did you get to Canada? Where did you, you, you will talk and talk and talk and talk. So how come you go through those hell of a thing only to get what? Get your house, yourself comfortable, you eat, you have, and after that, what else? Nothing, nothing else. I've just broken my fast now and I can't eat again. Mm -hmm. I'm tired, I can't eat again. I don't even know, like, mm -hmm. not, it's not as if there's no food, I, don't, I can't even eat. But my brother and sister, some people don't even have what to eat now. They've broken their fast and they are sleeping in hunger. Mm -hmm. That is life. So nothing, nothing is easy. Nothing you get that is easy. So how come do you want the religion to be paradise, which is the promise of Allah after all this, is forever. This will last, okay, let's say 100 years, you die. But there, the Prophet had gone 1,400 years ago. We are still talking about him now. So that means he has been buried 1,400 years ago on this earth. But we are still alive. So only Allah knows maybe 1,400 years ago, people will also be still inhabiting this surface of the earth. So we have a very small time to spend here with all our effort, with all we put in. We all know that despite this effort, we will die. But if you die, what do you have for after death? That's the question. And that's why when we pray so that nobody pay us. After Fadu, nobody gives you money. After Zoom, nobody gives you money. After Ramadan, nobody gives you money. The money is in your account of hereafter. You must have saving. That is your saving. And that's it. That's the only thing you have. When you go to the graveyard, the first night, what do you have to present to the angel? Not your money, not your car, not your wife, not your husband, not your children, not your parents. It is those good bits that you have. So, yes, if he says it's difficult just to come to his level, yes, it's difficult because nothing good comes easy. If he says it's difficult, yes, it's difficult because we know after every hardship there is ease. Allah Alam. Yeah. Jazak, Jazakum Allah, Khairan, uh, Sheikh. And can you use that to explain this in Naha la Kabirat and Illa ala la Khashin? Yes. And in addition to that, what my brother just reminded me now about Salat, Allah says, the Salat, as easy as it is, it is very difficult, except for those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in, I mean, embedded their mind with piety. Otherwise, it will be very difficult. 
There are so many verses of the Quran that talks about piety and practicing of Islam. One says, Anybody whom Allah wants to guide, Yashira Islam. Everything will be easy for him oh. to practice. Even for those who are easy, you can still remember those days that it was very hard. You can still remember. So that's just the picture. But like he said, Salat in some occasion, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really loves you, Allah will make it easy for you. And that's just it. Allah will make it easy. And if it's very difficult, then you have to also set your mind to think very deeply and then try as much as possible to learn about it. Jazakullah Haran uh, Avarun, I want to say that we really love you. We really appreciate you as, uh, as you have always uh, been a guide to the youths and the elder ones too. Exactly. So may Allah reward you abundantly. Uh, yeah. Uh, I would uh, enjoin our members to let you go because I think you have to still wake up for your sahur and you know the Lailatul Qadri period is what we have now. You have uh, ibadahs to do, but this is also one of the ibadahs encouraged. I could see that there are some brothers from Dublin that have joined. I saw brother Abikabir, uh, Olufa there, I think he's there. Maybe there may be a few other brothers. Uh, we really appreciate you. I miss you. My love to everyone there. So we'll call on the Amir. Uh, brother Dawood that you're going to, to do the voting vote of thanks to our lecturer so we can let him off. Uh Jazakum Lahem. Afa Dawood. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Uh listening to you, it's a uh, kind of uh, reminiscent of the good old days. And like I said in my opening speech or the, 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 at the beginning that alhamdulillah we parted ways in the part of us al islam alhamdulillah again we are meeting again seeing the part of al islam meet our prayer um, uh, to allah is to make us inshallah reunite all of all of us inshallah in our jannah free mm -hmm. we are grateful to you for giving us your time and to share part of your knowledge may peace allah to continue to enrich you in knowledge mm -hmm. and in piety Mm -hmm. And accept all your efforts as an act of ibadah. Mm -hmm. And it is Allah to not to deny you the benefits in the life, in the life, in the life of this world, in the grave, and most importantly, in that of the hereafter. Mm -hmm. uh, your family, your children and wife who have given us, a, given you the opportunity to be able to do all this, may peace Allah to reward them abundantly too, mm -hmm. and uh, bring them bring us all together uh, in paradise, in Athena. In Athena, in Athena, in Athena, in Athena, in Athena, in Athena, in Athena. Jazakallah, we cannot thank you enough. Thank you. Inshallah, we'll be, uh, we, like you said, we thank Allah for bringing us the opportunity through COVID. Because if not for COVID, we will probably not have the opportunity to, yeah. to hear uh, uh, from and do this depth of knowledge again. Yeah. So maybe start to uh, bring this kind of opportunity again, but is the body of COVID on all of us. <laughs> yeah. 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 So let's uh, go to the next program on our event. Um, uh, we will just um, call on uh, Sister Fusena. Is there any announcement? Um, uh, just, I'm sorry, before the announcement, uh, if I no. don't say this, I won't be comfortable. I'm sorry. Um, it's always good to appreciate uh, people when you have the opportunity to do that. It's not because they demand it, but because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also encourage us to do the same thing. I'm really happy uh, for your job, your efforts, particularly Dr. Abdul Baiz, um, who I know very well, but um, I didn't even know that um, Brother Dawood Adelito is also uh, there. I can this very well anywhere, anytime. I didn't even know you are in Canada. <laughs> and, um, Alhamdulillah, that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like you said, uh, brought us together on the part of Islam. Uh, this is not a matter of 10 years, it's a matter of two, three decades ago. Alhamdulillah, we are still on the path. Our prayer is that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep our feet firm on the path, keep on doing job you are doing, uh, responding, sacrificing, giving your time for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which you have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with you, be with your family, Allah subhanahu wa 
I will never uh, forsake you. May Allah not forsake your family. May Allah not forsake your efforts. May we meet just where we are meeting her here in this world in paradise. Um, no, he got us your name, and I told you my YouTube. But I'm like, can you pray for Abraham Gidado, please? And brother, brother Gidado, my <laughs> brother Gidado, my may Allah subhanahu wa love you with you. May Allah subhanahu wa taala uh, 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 give you. Uh, your request may Allah unite with your family, inshallah. So this, inshallah, and your objective of coming to Canada, may you be able to achieve it. Amen. Amen. He, uh, Amen. With all your effort and the effort of all Muslim students all over the world. Brother Daoud, you can take over the meeting uh, if there's any general information. Um, I think probably just to just a reminder from the welfare committee about uh, the ongoing effort about um, uh, our commitment to the NISA homes and food banks to kind of uh, using the month of Ramadan, which is the month of giving, that we encourage our members to give generously in this month of Ramadan. Uh, for whatever we give, it is just a savings for us uh, to meet, that we're gonna meet for sure if in, the, in the life of the hereafter. So that's about the main thing. And then uh, we're also preparing for heat as well. So I think we're probably gonna get um, the full details across to us. Uh, we will be most likely coordinating with the general Muslim community through the WIA. Uh, what is being planned tentatively is going to be uh, a virtual eat prayer. What that means, I mean, we've, none of us has ever done that in our lifetime. So it's, we are going to be learning as we go. So, but basically what it's going to mean is that we're going to play, pray uh, in our homes. We will do as if we, the, what we normally do on a heat day, uh, like the professor advised us to take a shower, dress in our best clothes, but instead of going to heat ground, we're going to find a very comfortable place in our homes, and then we'll, we'll spread the mat as if we are 